My name is Timothy Lee, but just call me Tim. This morning, I begin my session telling a story. It is uh, just an old story. However, there's uh, one strange point in this story. Certain part of my story, you will feel some discomfort, just like uh, you got some uh, fish bone stuck on your throat. So if you feel some discomfort in my story, you rightly understand what I mean. So please pay attention. <laughs> there was a small village nearby the seashore. Village people were fishmen to go out and catch fish. Then the sea around that the village had a problem. It was a dangerous sea. Many leaves were hidden under the seawater, and the unexpected gust of wind blow. Then the sea began to boil and swelled with the raised waves. So, in a, when the sea was a gentle and calm, many ship can pass by the sea safely. But in a stormy season, unexpected wind blow and the raising waves hit the ships, many ships wrecked, and the people were drowning to death. And ships were wrecked, village people boldly jumped into the sea with their small uh, fishing boat and rescued their lives. They did these jobs for a long time. They saved so many people out of the water. So they believed that the reason why God located our village right at this point seems to be this mission. Then one day, one of village people told to the rest of his villagers, Dear brothers, I have a good idea to save more lives from the sea. What's that? He told that in a, in a stormy season, we pulled our boat back to the village. Then we found out the ship was wrecked. We began to push and pull the heavy boat to the seaside. It took her quite a long time. We were always late. Many people already drowned to death. So what about we build up a one boat storage at the seaside and the stored boat over there, protected from the strong wind and the raging waves. So when, you find, when we find the ship is wrecked, we just run into the boat house at the seashore and they took out our fishing boat and the Rouching to rest, then we will get more life to save. It sounds good. So people built the boat storage at the seaside. It worked. They could save more life. After a while, another villager told his fellow, I'll also have uh, another good idea. What's that? You know, in stormy seasons, some of our villagers occasionally just uh, strolling at the seashore, and he found that she was wrecked by chance. So he rushed back to the village and uh, collect the people and uh, bring them to the boat house and they uh, take a boat and uh, launch him to risk it. It took a long time. We were late. What about, you know, stormy seasons, we do not go out to catch fish, so stand guard at the boat storage. So let them be under watching over the sea. Then they found that she is lacked 
immediately they launch the boat at the boat stories. Then we can save more life. It sounds great. So they began to be under watch over the sea at the boat house. It worked. They can save more life. Then later, another people come up, and he said, "I have another good idea. What about we build up the shelter facility at the boat house, boat storage, and we pro- provide a warm stove and comfortable seat at the shelter? It is badly needed because I practically joined in the rescue work in the winter seasons." I took the people out of the cold water and bring them, brought them to the land and returned to the sea. And later I found out the rescues, rescues who were saved from the water was frozen on the land and sometimes they were frozen to death. So we need a shelter, provide a warm stall and comfortable seat So for them to take a breath, villagers believe it is needed. So they build up the shelter at the boat storage. Then another people comes up. We need a kitchen at the shelter. So we would like to provide a warm soup to the person who rescued from the drowning. And we want to provide a simple food for those our guys who are under watch. Yeah, it was needed, so they built up the kitchen. Then, one by one, as they getting more facility at the boat storage, one change has made among the village peoples. Even out of stormy seasons. Village people began to gather together at the boat storage in the evening after they finished their daily job. Because in the boat storage, in the shelter, they can enjoy it in good mood and meet a good, wonderful friends and sharing simple but good food together. Sometimes they enjoy the music with the warm stove. And the compound of a seat. So they to get gathered together every evening. Don't be scared. Not yet. You can get a fish bone. Maybe it come up. Then time has passed. They getting aged. So they got married and have family, wife and children. And uh, as they get older. They began their own business at the village. Gradually, they began to feel burden to stand guard at the boat storage, even in the stormy seasons. And also, they began to hesitate to jump into the water with a small fishing boat because they have wife and children. Gradually, some uh, discomfort and uncomfortable things were filled up on their throat. And suddenly, one of them boldly told to the village people, "Dear brothers, I think what we are doing is not so wise things. We are all amateur. It is too dangerous to jump into the wide waves. We have a uh, wife and children." I have a better idea. What about we give money and hire professional rescue team? People were hesitated at the beginning, but gradually, one by one, people agreed with that idea, and finally, they gave money and hired professional rescue team. It was really satisfied. They were really professionals. They rode very well in the、uh, raising waves, and they very skillfully fished the dam out of the water. 
Then one thing has been changed among the people. They didn't jump into the water. Village people didn't jump into the water. Instead of that, they just standing in the seaside and cheering, shouting, singing, and crying. What a good job you are doing! Oh, I see there's some head over there. Why you are moving slowly, moving over there? I saw another head over there, moving that direction. They just shouting and cheering. However, so far so good. Village people began to recognize unexpected things. Operating a rescue team, professional rescue team, needed endless money. This is just like a bottomless pit. They have to continue to provide a new member. They continue to provide a new gear. They continue to provide a new chance of training. It continue to demand a great amount of money. And they realize that just operating on one rescue team, they needed so many meetings and councils and the committees. Gradually, the village people feel a big burden to participate all the meetings and the councils and the committees. So discomfort filled up again in their throats. One day, one of village people said to the rest of them, we must be honest. From the beginning, it was beyond our ability to operate the rescue team in this small village. We are really, we have limited resources. We cannot operate in this rescue team. We have to dismiss this team. Village people oppose that, but as time passing, one by one agreed, and finally they dismissed the rescue team. Now, nobody jumped into the water to rescue the people. However, in the evening, they continue to gather together at the boat, boat storage to enjoy their time. Then a certain group of young generations stood up against the older generation. They blamed them. They point their fingers to the older generation. What are you doing? You forgot all the reason why we built up the boat storage over here, why we gather together. You forgot the reason why we are here. We withdraw from these meetings. So a group of younger generation was separate from that uh, meeting, and they began to jump again into the water. But after a while, one member of that younger generation told them, dear brothers, I think we need a boat storage to be effective. We need to stand guard. We need a shelter. We need a kitchen. Then time has passed. Finally, they also hired the professional rescue team. And uh, after for a while, they also dismissed the rescue team. Another new generation stand against them. What are you doing? We withdraw from you. It is a quite a long story. I can continue to tell this story until the next National Missions Congress. <laughs> but I want to tell you the conclusion. If you visit that seaside, that village in these days, you can find out so many st boat storage buildings and so many rescue club houses there. Then 
nobody jumped into the water. Still in the sea, many ships are wrecked and people are drowned. Do you get what it does mean? Do you understand what the story is all about? It is the story of the church. The church. The church is not for believers to gather together to enjoy their salvation. No. Show up and protect and to preserve their own salvations. They gather together and the singing and praising. I'm saved. You saved. We saved. No. Maybe it seems to contrary to your expectation. Church is an institution for non-believers staying outside of the kingdom of God. On behalf of God. Church got to bring them back to the kingdom of God. That's the mission of the church. Of course, church has a dual meaning. Church is constituted for born again Christians to worship. However, what the worship is all about? The base meaning of worship. Means your action and your attitude to recognize God is God. So the life of individual Christians should worship every moment. So the worship, in a sense, worship doesn't mean that you are sitting in the church chair on the Sunday morning. Every moment, every day, every hour, you worship. Then the reason why God collect the individual Christians who are living worship into one community has a specific missions. That was that bring the people back to the kingdom of God on behalf of God. Therefore, church is missionary by its nature. The calling of church is a missionary one. The early church did well understand their missions, so the church in Antioch didn't hesitate to separate their top leaders to do the missionary work, because that was the, their nature, their missions, and the churches uh, are growing up. They begin to build up some、uh, programs and the meetings to make it effective their missions. So they added the meetings, trainings, programs, and traditions, and so many things to their churches. Then certain moment is not a good word, but I want to use it. At the moment, church no longer are in Hungary. When the church not church no longer in destitute, they lost why they are existing. Then the real meaning of their mission melted down. Only the outer shell to make their mission effective will remain. It worked as the function of the church. You know that it's not a, only the story of a failure of the contemporary churches. In the Bible, we found out so many same stories. You know very well the Genesis chapter twelve, verse one through three. It is a famous、uh, scripture verses, and also it is a, one of the Uh, crucial turning point of the Bible. God called Abraham, and、uh, He created the people of Israel. You know the whole story. The Lord has said to Abraham, "Leave your country, 
leave your people and leave your father's household and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever cause you, I will cause. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. It's so famous verses, so I believe many of you have memorized it. Then I want to ask you very strange questions. What is the key point of an Abrahamic covenant? What is the most important things in the Abrahamic covenant? I would like to ask you one, of, one by one, but it takes a time, long time, so I will do by myself. Many people believe that that's the first one. Because in the Hebrew chapter 11, it talks about that uh, Abraham is a father of our faith. The reason why he became a father of faith comes from verse 1. God told him, go to the land, I will show you. It doesn't mean that he did not yet show him where it is. So Abraham didn't know where he should go, but he obeyed. He just moved forward. That was a great faith. Those who follow the verse 1, there's a three key word, faith, obedience, and commitment. So when I was in the disciples training in the college days, I heard these three words maybe a million times. They repeatedly, they told me that it is so important in the Christian life, faith, obedience, and commitment. Faith, obedience, commitment. Faith, obedience, and commitment. Then, dear brothers and sisters, I tell you one story, a different story. Faith, obedience, and commitment are absolutely necessary thing in our Christian life, but those are not the goal of our Christian life. Those things are just needed in the process to follow God. It's not the goal of our faith. Then some of you believe that, okay, verse 2 might be the key verses. I do not want to spend a long time in the verse 2. Verse 2 talking about uh, to be blessed. God promised you to be blessed. I wish you to receive the blessings. But this blessing is also needed thing to follow his goal. We just needed it in the process. Then it is a crucial question, why God called out Abraham? Why God called out the Israelites? That comes in verse 3. God's purpose is to all people on earth will be blessed through Abraham. The blessing in this verse doesn't mean the financial or physical blessing. It doesn't mean that bring people back to God again and restore the relationship with God again. How could you interpret like that? Well, you know that chapter 12 didn't come out from the vacuum. It continued the story from the chapter 10, 11, and 12. In chapter 10, we read that uh, people turned their back from the Lord and they rebelled and they left. So God began to his work to let them to return him, restore the relationship with God. In that line, he talked about this blessing. Because of that, this blessing doesn't mean that people return to God and restore the relationship with God. God called out Abraham and the Israel not to be the special chosen people of God, Rather, he called out them to be an instrument to bring back the people. So the Abraham calling was a missionary calling. 
It is a real key verses in the Old Testament. You know that the verse 3 of chapter 12 repeated four times in the book of Genesis. He told it twice to Abraham and one to Isaac, another one to Jacob. Every generation, the Lord repeated the reason why he called them out. That's to bring the people back to God. That's the blessing the Lord intended. Therefore, sometimes we misunderstood. God chose the Israel to be a special nation and special peoples of God. Election. No. That was a, just a byproduct. The main reason God called out Abraham was to be an instrument of his missionary work. But Israel failed. And they hold fast to verse 1 and 2. And they hold the concept of a special election. We are the special chosen peoples. So their face has turned away. So it is a, their face doesn't mean they separate from the Gentiles and preserve their holinesses. Then surprisingly in the Old Testament, God repeat and repeat and repeat. He told them, it's not my intention. The reason why I called you out to be my instrument. Well, I can spend a whole night to tell those verses in the Old Testament. There are so many scripture verses that talk about that. I want to present only a couple of them. Genesis, Exodus chapter 19, it is another turning point of Israel. They arrived at the mountain Sinai. It doesn't mean that Exodus was completed. Moses got a commission at the mountain Sinai to bring his people back out from the Egypt. So finally, they arrived at the mountain Sinai. It doesn't mean that Exodus was completed. They were waiting to receive the, another commandment from the Lord. What they expected? Maybe they wanted to hear this kind of word. Dear my people, I prepared a special paradise in Canaan. Canaan. So you go enter there and enjoy the luxury life over there. And certainly, Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6, God spoke to the Israel through the Moses. Then it was not expected answer. The Lord said that, Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations will be my treasured possessions. Key point is right now, he said, Also, the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and the holy nations. God has never forsaken the world. He never loved only Israelites. He loved all the world. Still the whole world is his one. Israel was called to be the nation of a priest. What the priest is. In the Old Testament times, people cannot come into the presence of God. So they needed uh, some middle people standing between the God and the people. That was a priest. So when they committed the sin, the priest received the sacrifice and bring it to the Lord's presence and received the promise of forgiveness and turn it to the peoples. So he stand between the God and the people. Israel was called to be a nation of priests between God and the all nations for them back to Christ. That was a missionary calling of the Israelites. But they forget it. Just that they stick to hold the, we are the special chosen people of God. God continued to tell them that was not my intention. Another one is a typical one, Isaiah 49, 6. 
from the chapter 40 of Isaiah, Isaiah, the Lord began to restore the remnant of Israel from the captivity. Then suddenly in the chapter 49, he told this story to Israel. It is too small thing for you to be my servant to, to restore the tribe of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles. Then you may bring my salvation to the end of the earth. We call these verses the great commissions in the Old Testament. God's intention was to not bless the Israel only, to save them only. God's intention was just to use them as his instrument of his missions. Then they forgot their calling. So they failed. I want to jump over several verses, but in the Bible, continually God gave a warning to the Israel. I called you out to be my instrument of a mission calling. They failed. In the, old, in the New Testament, the Lord began again this whole story. Instead of Israel, God called out the church. And the, the reason why he called out church was there to be the instrument of God to bring people back to the kingdom of God. Then they failed again. They failed again. Long time ago, 1988, already 28 years ago, at that time I was in Texas, United States. I was an associate pastor of a Korean Baptist church over there, and I also was a doctor student at the time. In 1988, my church made a, one a mission project in the Belize, a country located in the Central America. Typically, they spoke in English. So I went there, and my team finished the mission project, and we returned. In 1980s, it was not a usual thing. The ethnic church, <laughs> Korean church, participated and uh, carry on some mission project in the field. So it was unusual. So next month, the whole the Korean uh, pastors uh, getting some big assembly. They asked me to report what we have done over there. So I went to the pastors' meeting. There was a full of a, a participant of a pastors, just like over here. And uh, I report what we have done in the country, Belize. Then, as I finished my report, one of the pastors raised his hand, and he asked me a question. Actually, that was not a question. His voice was full of a reproach. Actually, he reproached me. He said, hey, young guy, you know how your report sounded to me? It sounds just like uh, you boast your own churches. Now you are boasting that my church is big, my church is rich, we have uh, many members, we are strong. Okay, your churches are big and strong, so you can carry on the missionary work in the field. Okay, my church is so small. We are poor. It is difficult for us just to change our windows, one windows. We are small and poor churches. Then how can we carry on the missionary work? Hey, young man, I really hate you continue to speak that my church is big and strong and many members. Please stop your boasting. It's disgusting. I was at a loss. But I carefully answered him that, Dear Pastor, 
the church has no right to choose whether to do mission or not. The church only existed to do missions. Big churches, rich and have many church members and strong churches should carry on big mission work. Needed more people, more finance, more strength. And small churches existed to carry on small missions. Needed less people, less finance, less strength. Church has no right to choose whether to do mission or not. Church is only existed to carry on the mission of God. The mission, what I'm talking here, is not, does not mean that you go to the strange people, which we cannot pronounce their name properly in the Kalahari Desert in Africa, or go to the desert, Gobi Desert in the Mongolia. Not only that things, but also, it might be your neighbor next to the house of your church buildings, just mission doesn't mean that bring back the people to the kingdom of God. It is our missions. Time has changed. The global became the small global village. So in these days, regardless the distance, regardless the difference of culture, when God opened the door for us, it is our responsibility to carry on the mission as much as we have. That's the reason why we to be a church. You know that it was a big change. Before the 19th century, most important concept of God is that God's pre-existence. So God is God who is there and speak to us. Therefore, at the time, there was, that was the understanding of God. They believed that the role and the function of the church is just to worship God who is there. Then the beginning of the 20th century, a brilliant theologian come up. He just made a crucial paradigm shift on the concept of God. Of God. That was Karl Barth. He coined a new terminology. He defined that God as the actual day. Actual day doesn't mean that the God of action. God is not God who is there and is just sitting over there. God is doing something in the world. God is not staying still. God is working something in this world. If God is just an active day, the purpose of a church is not only worship who is God who is there, but also participate and to be the instrument in his actions. Therefore, famous theologian Emil Bruno talks this word, the church existed by mission just as fire exists by burning. Without the burning, the fire cannot exist. Same way, without the mission, church cannot exist. You get it? It is a very dangerous word, you know? Even you get it together on Sunday morning in church building, and read the scriptures and pray and the praising and the listen to the sermon. If there's no missions, it is no longer church. If you gather together and worship, even there's no missionary work, it is not a church but Christian social club who satisfy your religious need. Church 
it's the church because you carry on missions. Then there are some misunderstanding about the, what the church is all about. I call that there's a three traps for the church easily to fall in. It's a wrong concept of the church. I want to elaborate this wrong concept, but some of you might be got shocked because you believe church is uh, this one, but this is a wrong concept. Give away this concept. Number one is that some church believe that the reason of the existence of church is just the church cross. No man is living to be a grown up. Just uh, we carry on what you have to do as a human being, we grown up. But some churches just want to grow their church itself. Their church growth should be the byproduct. Those who are just seeking for the church growth only always look at one church in the United States. From Los Angeles, you travel about one and a half hours, then there's a small town named uh, Mission Biao. There is one famous church located there, Saddleback Churches. About 30 years ago, that church was started with a, a small number of uh, members. Then it grown up so fast, every Sunday, tens of thousands of people gathered to worship. It became the one of the largest church in the United States. So many pastors wanted to know how it grows so fast. Fast. So in my country, Korea, many pastors made a group and they made a tour to visit the Saddleback churches. They want to learn special skill, special technology, special method to grow their church so fast. Then I was surprised many pastors who returned from the trip, they said, I learned a special cure to grow my church so fast. They said that, well, we will stop the church choir anymore and uh, let the professional Christian singers could lead the worship service. I want to stop the traditional pattern of worship anymore. I want to change it to the contemporary patterns. And the Saturday Church has a special training uh, education program that comes from the uh, baseball game, the first, the second, third, and home in. So, some pastors say, well, well, I will stop the whole our traditional education systems and change it to the 101, 2, and 301 systems. Some pastors are shouted, I will no longer have a suit and tie. Lick water and never wear the suit and tie. Not only the suit and tie, he didn't wear the sock, or as he come up on the platform barefoot. Then I surprised them. I didn't meet the pastor who learned the core value of Lick Warren insisted. Lick Warren insisted, continued to say that, this word, success of ministry have nothing to do with the size of a church building, size of a congregation, size of an annual person. It doesn't mean that you cannot measure your success of ministry from those things. How, my, how much my church membership is growing compared to the 10 years? How much my church building is growing enlarged compared to the five years ago? How much we increase the annual budget compared to the next year? That's not the yardstick to measure your success of a ministry. Liquoran said that success of ministry is only to do with the purpose of God. It's only depend on the mission of God is accomplished in your church. 
So you want to measure my ministry is it successful or not? Just you looking that in your church, mission of God is achieving now. That's the point. Do not fall into the trap of a ch- your church grows on. Church is exist to achieve mission of God. Number two. Some church misunderstood that church is the same one to the Old Testament temple. No, church is not the same one to the temple in the Old Testament times. In Old Testament times, the Lord stayed only in the temple. If we want to meet the God, we got to go to the temple. Temple is a holy place without sin. So in the temple, we have to learn the holiness, and also we experience the feeling of a paradise. That was the temple. Then, you know, the church is not a temple of the old testament times. If you want to find out the same one to the old testament temple, it must be the. Individual born again Christians. Individual Christians are temple of God. Holy Spirit is dwelling in you. You must be holy. You must be experience the life of in the paradise. Then church is not the Old Testament times or temple in the Old Testaments. Well, church looks like a. Situation room of the command post. I served the two and a half years in Korean Army. That was a mandatory duty for the all Korean male. I was a soldier serving in the situation room. Well, I'm never engaged in the real war, but every year we have a practice of war. Then in the situation room is just a mess up. There's a big table, many officers spread out uh, so many maps, and they, they shout and they discuss. Then they made uh, some good dispute that a uh, protects over here, and we break through these areas. Uh, defense over here, provide more forces over here, and they shouting and they discuss the whole kind of strategies. In another side of the world, there's uh, many radios uh, continually shouting some demand. We have many soldiers uh, died and the wounded. Please uh, evacuate them to the hospital and uh, send us the new resources. We run out of ammo anymore. Please provide the ammo. We are dividing now. We expect your uh, support of artillery forces over here. Continue they demand some things, and in other door. New recruits come up and they trained and they deployed. New materials come up and it was distributed. It is a messed up. It looks like a busy marketplace. That is the church. Church is doing God's business. Church is the place to do something for God. Not only gently sitting on the chair and they learn the Bible, share some good knowledge, and they have a good feeling, good mood. That's not the church. Church is the place to do God's business. In Korean word, it comes from many words. It comes from the Chinese word. In Chinese word, the jia hui does mean that gathered and learn. So many people understood that church is gathered together and to learn the word of God. I really dissatisfy this concept. Church must be the gathered together and the carry on what God designed. That's the church. Many years ago. I attended the one Presbyterian church's uh, church building dedication service. 
Then, unexpectedly, there was a heavy snow. No speakers could come. <laughs> so the uh, senior pastor of that church was uh, quite embarrassed. Then suddenly he asked me, Dear brother, you are professors at the seminary. Please come up and say, just to say a word of congratulations. So I was pulled on to the platform. I was not completely unprepared. So I didn't know what should I do. Then I looked at the building. That was a so fine buildings. So I told them, you built up the very beautiful buildings right over here. Your task is not preserve this building. Your task is just to wear out this building as soon as possible. That's the church. That's the church. So the long concept is that some church consider the church as a business. I served for a while as a mission pastor, as a associate minister. Then, uh, uh, please pardon me, I say like this. The enemy of the mission pastor is the deacon of finance. <laughs> Always, he reproached me. Hey, young pastor, what you are doing? You do not know that my church has so many demands. There's a big hole in the parking lot. We have to fix it. There's a roof is licking the rain. Then the Sunday school class needed, needed such things as some machines are broken and the, our heating machine is broken. We need a new air condition, so we need more chair. You don't know that we have uh, so many needed things. Then you, if we collect, accumulate a small fund, then your mission pastor just to take it and use it outside of the church. What are you doing? So always I answer him very gently, Dear Mr. Deacon, church is not a business. Church is not a business. If church is a business, it is our goal to earn more profit and make our people to live a more comfortable lives. But church is not a business. We got to use our fund as much as possible to people who are in the outside of the church. That's the mission of God. Remember that church is not only the institution of worship. That was an old concept. In the 20th century, we find out God is a God of action. He's doing his own purpose. He carry on and he's achieving his own purpose in the world. The reason why he called the church out from the world is to join hands to accomplish his mission in the world. That's the reason you are here. If there's no mission is achieving in your churches, it is no longer the church. It is a just a Christian fellowship to meet their own religious need. Church exists by its missions. Church is missionary by nature. 200 years ago, when church in the Britain deployed the five missionaries, to Uganda in Africa. You know the 20 years ago, early part of the 19th century, do you, do you know that the average life, uh, average uh, survival period in Africa was only two years? If we send the 10 missionaries to Africa, within two years, Five of them, five of them died. After 10 years later, 19 out of 20 missionaries died. It was a terrible situation. So the team leader of the deployed team knew that fact. So 
in the final statement to his, his mother church, he said like this, my dear brothers and sisters, maybe within two years, you may hear that one of our members would die. Please don't cry for us. Instead of that, I want to ask a favor of you. Please, someone come to this place as a substitute. That team did not to wait for two years. Just after six months later, one person died, another person died, and died, and died. After two years later, only one person left. Their church, mother church, was so great. When they heard their young persons died in the mission field, they heavily grieved. But always there was someone to volunteer to join that team. That team was continuing to be five persons to the end. That was the church. Many of you are pastors of the local church. Then I want to ask you, is your, your, is your meeting a church? Why you gather together? Why your church existed? Find out that only reason is to be the instrument of God's purpose in the world. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.